Hey everybody, we are going to show you, at least I'm going to attempt to show you, complete training. So if I fail, it's because I wasn't trained properly. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so this will be the first time that we're actually just walking, or running through this. So we've already done an LS program and a Big Block Chevrolet program. So what I'm going to show you is, we're going to go all the way through this thing right from start to finish. So uh, we're gonna start this right from here. So we go right to, and then uh, Ed will jump in here and correct me if I'm doing something wrong. And uh, so we've already done the LS program, so we select LS. Do I double click it? Nope. Oh, select. And then, yep. I did select the program. Yep, then. Oh, hone thin, then yeah, hone thin wall. Select. select. Okay, now it's starting to ask us all our parameters, so our rough load, our finish load, plateau hold. Uh, we've already programmed all this stuff. Our stone length is always the same, overstroke. Cylinder length, we will double check that right now. It should be exactly the same. Yep, so that's the same. And then our lower overstroke number and then plateau, plateau strokes. Now here's where we're entering our cylinder diameter. Enter our crosshatch. If we wanted to enter a different crosshatch, let's say 25, it's that easy. 25 degree angle on a crosshatch. So it, it decreases, let's see, it would decrease the speed at which it goes up and down in order to decrease the crosshatch. If we wanted it to be, oh, how high does it go, I wonder? 80, oh it'll go to 80. I bet you that is smoking fast. <laughs> because it must go, Yep. Yeah, okay. So we're obviously not going to do that. Preferred is 45 degrees. Uh, now these are roughing RPM, finishing RPM, plateau RPM. I thought our finish RPM was slower than that. No. Nope. No. No, same as, a, same as a roughing. So same as a roughing. And you'll hear it, uh, well, if we had changed this to a different RPM right here, in the middle of the, or at the end of the cycle when it goes to finish, it would actually slow down. Yeah, and you could do that if you wanted. I think, we're, I think we're going to do that just for kicks and giggles. Yeah. All right, so we got that. So this is all our parameters. Now, our rollover clearance, this would, uh, and block clearance is not right because we set that block clearance with a, without a torque plate, right. So what we're going to do here is we'll hand wheel this over in X. Start on the left bank first. You always want to start on the left bank? Yeah, usually. Alright. Now this is an LS block. You see we have both torque plates on it already with gaskets. And then we'll go down. So we do come in here and we eyeball center up the Cone head. All right. So now we're going to turn the uh, the stones out to just start making contact. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. And actually, it'll when it makes contact, it'll actually just stop because it won't let me overload it, right? That's right. So we can just run it right out to it, right? Yes, you can. I could just run it out and then back it off. Yep. Ah, see there? Okay, so now crash. it just okay. Hit okay. And just cycle your power. Okay, and now just back your stones up a little bit. There you go. There you go. All right, and now we're going to set the top of stone height. And we'll go Z. So I'll set it right to the top of the cylinder bore. So you can see down in there the top of the cylinder bore. It's a little harder to see probably with the torque plate on it. And we will set X0 and Y or X0 and Z0. Alright. 
Now we need to come up and do the black clearance right here. So we run it up to as high as I want it to come out for clearance. So I just want it to come up there. That looks fine. Set. There we go. Okay. So uh, we've got it set. Uh, Z height, X height, or X, and clearance height. Roller height really doesn't matter too much. Nope. Um, uh, got that, 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 that. So, as Ed says, you kind of read this thing like a book. So you just start filling in inf all the information. So then we go over to the next information. Nothing to do in the thin wall. We go to bore locations. So our bore locations for LS are. Uh, gonna s do I set right here? So I still have to set number one. Yep. Okay. So now it'll go over when it uh, goes to the next bore. Automatically, it'll go to 4400, 8800, 13200, which is a 4400 bore space. All right, so we're all good there. Then our, what's that? They're off right now. Turn them on. Oh, you got to turn them on. Okay. Oh, yeah, see, we got to turn them green. So I want it to hone each hole. If I didn't want it to hone three, number three for some reason, it wouldn't hone it right now. So right now, everything's all green. It's going to hone. We would go over to right locations. And we already have the offsets all set in there. Yep. So it actually just does it. Yep. You're good. It just does it. They're turned on, no problem. Now we go to operation. And we are going to go to, uh, I think we got a set. You're going to feed your stones to diameter. To set stone, or zero stone diameter? You want to feed them to oh, diameter feed. first. Okay, so feed stone. Okay. Oh. Whoops. Why is that all uh, wobbly? Oh, well, we had to have it in the hole. Oh, you got to have it in the hole. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, so that I thought it, I thought it was honestly. I didn't. I wasn't. So, yeah, just runner it, run it down. Cut. Now we can. You can play that. It don't matter. Oh yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay. Yeah, that would make more sense. We're gonna feed these out. Get at least close. Get at least close. Something like that. All right. So, backtrack up. It started a machine when it wasn't ready to start. So uh, we put the hone head in the hole. Now we come over to feed stones to diameter. So it's going to feed the stones out until it touches. La, da, 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 da. Yeah, it must be the way to win. I would like to, we need to have those guys correct this because it only shows half of the tenth number. Oh, it's a resolution problem. <laughs> yep. Fix that. Oh. Every software engineer jump right on that one. Thanks. You're making metal note on right now. They're going to watch this video and go, oh yeah, we probably got to do that. It must have shifted something there, because it never used to. I thought, I don't remember it doing that before. Yeah. There you go. So now you can hear it just touched it. So is that is at zero? Now we'll zero our stone diameter. Now you're zero your stone diameter. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that is zero. Now, I already know that our, our final dimension is we want to take, uh, this is... 10,000 small, but on this first hole and the first setup, we'll just uh, so I could just do first hole because I, I could go back into the hone and not hone the other three holes, correct? Just hone one to size, yep. but we'll let it we'll let it go here. So we're going to do total stock removal, we're just going to say uh, eight, five. Yeah, you can get eight, two if you want. Let, let's do five because let's do five. Check, we want to check our surface, finish. yeah, we want to check our surface finish, anyways. So that's five thousandths. Our taper accommodation, uh, we'll just say five, just to make sure. That really doesn't matter all that much. If that number's a little bit big, it really doesn't care. All right, so we have set our, oh, we didn't, I didn't show you that we needed to set up our 
our uh, lower over stroke. So this is the bottom of the cylinder bore, 5.875. This is where it hits the block. The main webbing in the, or uh, I'm sorry, the bulkhead in the block is right there. All right, so we're all set there. And now this has, uh, what you're gonna see it do is, <clears throat> it is now going to, when I hit the, uh, the magic green start button here, it's going to come up, it's going to turn on, and then uh, it does the one thing that scares the death out of me is it rapid feeds to its next spot, which is just always scary. So it rapid feeds down to a certain spot in the bottom of the bore, and then it starts going in the bottom of the bore and makes sure that it doesn't crash before, you know, before it gets too late. So like on, on the CV over there, on the old hone, that is one of those things where you're, you're sitting there and you're feeding it down, you're going real slow, and you're making sure the thing doesn't go down and knock the stones right clean off of the head. Um, or, you know, I get a new guy over there and they'll come in there and they'll pull, pull the handle and they'll just go bang and just crash it right in. It's, it sucks. So this is doing this all automatically. So, we're cleared for takeoff here. All right, that's right. Let's pick up the screen. So you can watch this quite interesting and so it's going to and what it's going to do is it's going to take five thousands of material off and you know i'd like that we should just check that right now because it'll be interesting to see because here it's brand new it's just it just set so we would always uh start it out by taking some material out and then measuring it to make sure that okay uh now it knows exactly where it's at and we know that uh, it's very accurate. If we tell it to take out five thousands, it'll take out five thousands. But uh, it needs to know. It needs to have that start hone in order to know where zero actually is. So that's what we're actually doing here. So we're gonna run it, run it through this five thousands. It'll do all four bores. We'll come in. We'll measure it for how much we have left to go, and then we'll make that change in the program. And then when we hit the go button, it'll just be done. <laughs> Period. It'll just be done. All right, so we hit the cycle start, thumbs up, thumbs back down. Feed stones out. Now you'll hear it. That's the rapid that just takes. But it um, goes down and it must be clear because if it does crash, when it does crash down there, it'll stop, it'll come back up and it'll say, hey, you better change something stupid because you're going to crash the stone. And so you change something. Oh, yeah, 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 you got to watch that. So it knows that there's paper down at the bottom of the floor right now. And that's why it does that. Can you pause? Sure. Just hit uh, stop machine. There you go. Okay. So, to, to tell you what was going on there, and the amount of time that it just took to do that is astronomically quick. Because uh, on the CV over there, on the old hone, you're, I'm having to do the same thing, and you're, and you're sitting here, and you're, I've modified the machine, so you're, I'm moving the hand wheel and applying pressure, taking pressure off. So I'm trying to do all of that all at the same time. <laughs> by hand and then stop check 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 no nope. eh, 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 eh. check 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 I mean you keep on going and like this thing let's check it out here because it... oh 
Oh my gosh. You know what? I need to move this. <laughs> because that is the second time I've hit hit my gauge hit on there. Gauge. Yeah. Yep. Here, here pause. Hey, I gotta go check my move. gauge. <laughs> Alright, so my gauge is okay. Uh, the reason why I freak out about this is because like 1500 bucks for this gauge. They're, they are very accurate. So each one of these uh, little ticks here, just for information, so each tick is five ten thousandths of an inch. There you go. So five ten thousandths or half a thousand. So very accurate gauge. Now what we've already done is we've already gone to size with the diamond. And so we could take that to one stone right from ten thousandths, twenty thousandths, thirty thousandths, doesn't matter how much material you're taking out. We use the one stone all the way down to zero. So I'll show you that real quick. So these are at zero. And you can look here at the gauge. That is right at zero. Zero. Okay. So it's right on size. Now we come in and we hit it with the CBN stone. So you can see the difference here. So this is basically a rougher. This is a finisher, basically. Uh, this provides a plateau finish and does not remove any material. So they tell me. We are gonna find out here real quick. Um, these remove material. So we have the plateau finish in there. It goes through and does what? 12 strokes you said? Uh, 10 to 12 strokes. 10, yeah. 10 to 12 strokes with, and the, the plateau pressure is uh where's that a plateau load is 20 percent so it's 20 percent spindle load right there and then we'll come over here so this is uh it's already in the location we've already said all that stuff we literally just changed stones diamonds or cbn and press the magic go button and it's ready to rock and roll so it's going to come in here it's going to plateau finish now how did that i just didn't see so we are how's it know to go to plateau finish uh, no great question right there we turn that on so that's ah. off and now it's on now it's on okay so as long as that the plateau finishes on it, it does that okay got it okay i missed that part all right so we're now ready to hit the magic cycle start button which makes everybody nervous okay looks good it's not at least on this one it doesn't rapid rapid to zero now here it's also it's already crash protected itself it, uh, the, the the diamonds the ruffers are the same dimension as the finishing CBN so it already knows where the bottom of the bore is so it already knows crash protection so that's why on here it can't uh, it can't go down and, and just crash protect because it leaves it the wrong pattern on it. so when it's in plateau it only goes up and down it doesn't uh, doesn't dwell now what we're going to do is going to show you uh, the uh, the profilometer readings and what we're talking about with the uh, RPK, RVK, RK, and what those numbers mean and what they do to your cylinder bore, piston skirts, and rings. seen the proof that it does not remove any material yet so we'll, we'll see but we just showed you the bore, the bore on this one so this is now provided the plateau finish so it's just a two stone slash uh, tool process you can see here well, 
I meant to do different, but I think it took out a tenth. Did it? I think okay. it took out a tenth. Alright. Yeah, I think it took out a tenth. Yeah. Yep. Which is fine. Um, so that side is finished. Now we flip the block over to the other side. I go to... Oh, not yet. Uh, yeah, no, I, yeah, I, I'm going to... Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, you even can't hit that yeah, button. you can't hit that button. You have to, that's why this was red. Oh. It was lit, so you can run it down. Remember, you have to, we have to do our Y-axis. I still axis. have to do the Y-axis, yep. yeah. And All right. just run it in the hole. Oh, did it automatically? Oh, it automatically, after it did that side, it automatically went to right bank. Yes, sir. Oh, you just that's where it's confused. Just y. Oh, okay, I got you. All right. So we get this back down. Okay, so now it is in there. What we're going to do here is we're going to go, go to right location. Right we're going to turn these left off because it'll want to do the left first. Now you're ready to go. Oh, because I hit the button? Mm -hmm. Oh, I screwed it up. I got you. Oh, you're good. No, oh, no, I screwed it up. Okay, so uh, cycle start right from here. Uh-huh. And then it's going to ask you again. Now you can hit OK. Oh, now I, need, I understand what's going on. So it'll do this side. So... I got all greedy and hit the wrong button too quick. So I had to go through the process again. This side is all was zero already, so I'm not going to bother showing you that. But I wanted to just finish it while we're at it. Since it goes so quickly. And uh, then we're going to stick the profilometer in there. I'll show you that right now, actually. So... This is, how, how big is the, the pin in there? Diamond? Oh, geez, I, I forget what the diameter is on that diamond, but obviously it's really tiny. Because we're talking millions of an inch in surface finish. Yeah, so there is, so this goes up and down. And so this will be in the bore. It'll go up and down. And there is... Needle on a there, record there is, player. Yeah, it's like yeah, like a needle on a, a record player. Yeah, for for all you guys that uh, are too young to know what a record on a, or a needle on a record player is, you can go look that up. <clears throat> um, but because I can't, I I see there's something there, but I can't yeah, see oh yeah, it. It's small. So it's very small. So it's so small that that little thing is actually uh, goes in the little valleys and peaks, and it actually is measuring. Um, the surface finish. So just like that record player, instead of making music or making vibrations, it's taking those, uh, well actually it is, it would probably be actually taking the vibrations and puts it into yeah. uh, print, which looks like that. So we'll put this, um, put this in the bore, like right now. Yep. So so we can send this, how do you send it home? Uh, all the way to the, to the left? Uh, we can go in here and just hit post cycle locations and hit run post. Let's see, are we, Z, X, no, oh, that's Y. So what we need to do is we'll run it this way. We, we didn't manually. Okay. Yeah, we didn't set. We didn't set our post. Nah, we didn't set our post cycle. Okay. Deal. We'll set that now. Okay. All right. All right. So before we put that in, one of the things we have to do is really clean the board. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Clean the board, obviously, because when you're when you're talking millions of an inch, just one or two little. Yeah, because it'll it's gonna pick up dirt. Yep. or grit. So wipe out the bore. Kind of show them what we what we're talking about here. Now the one thing that you have with uh, see on that cloth all the dirt that was that was in that cylinder. Yeah and so that dirt is not really dirt that's actually material block material yep. when you get into stones and the old machine a lot of what you pull out of the cylinder boards is actually grit from the stone sand basically so here uh the diamonds do not wear away and the the cbn does not wear away into the material into the bore uh that is only bore material all right so we put this thing in you want to put it in or no, you can go. I'll let you do that. That's fine. And we're 
All right, so that that puts uh, it just puts pressure in there to hold it all into in place. And now, let's see. I'm gonna go here and. Obviously, we were not prepared <laughs> to do this part. Let's see. Oh, there you go. Okay. So I'm, I'm holding this, and it does absolutely nothing. <laughs> well, it'll actually kind of trace it out on there. It will kind of trace it out. Well, yeah, I mean, it kind of traces it out here, but it's going to trace it out and, and show us the, the entire pattern on, on the screen right there. But that's kind of what it's me measuring right there. This is what we used to look at. Yeah, that's what we used to look at. Now now we have Trace Boss, which is just a phenomenal tool. Yep. You probably won't see anything until it finishes. There you go. Sounds like it's finished. It takes a minute for it to... Go we can take that out now. All right. And there's your finish. Okay, so here is the finish of that cylinder bore. Let you get right in there real tight there, 10 foot can. So you can see uh, this red line, the red line is uh, RK? RPK. That's RPK. So the red line is the peak, and so you can basically see that it has little valley lines and that's what we're looking for. We don't want to, if this was inverted upside down, it would just destroy rings, pistons, everything. Exactly. Okay, so the plateau finish, uh, you know, we should have measured it without doing the plateau. It would look like this, wouldn't it? Yeah. It, it would be yes. upside, it would just be consistent all the way up and down. Sure would. So the plateau comes in and basically goes just because of this thing, a haircut, and knocks all the peaks and all those tops off. But we, on the valleys, we want to leave that. So you see how it's nice and flat up here? That's our RPK. Our RK is in the blue. White. White? Mm -hmm. The white's really hard to see in there, but it's just, that's right dead in the middle. So the red line is the, the top peak. The RK is the white, correct? Yep. Which is just the real uh, well, how would you say it? That's it's what we kind of call the core roughness. The core roughness, there you go. Yep. And then all these VK numbers, everything that is here is area that is holding oil. Uh, we uh, honed a block and the old machine, the standard method that I used for the last 20 years. <clears throat> and occasionally, I would have the old method, I would have a piston skirt problem. Never really had uh, ring issues because uh, because it's too fine. It's too smooth a surface is what I've been doing. So we want to have this VK where there's actually, it's perfectly flat but it has over exaggerated like oil grooves on the bottom. And that oil is lubricating the ring without hurting the ring and it's uh, a little more importantly to me is it is lubricating the piston skirt at the same time. So it's going to help with any kind of scuffing issues, anything like that, because I was, over the last 20 years, occasionally I'd have one cylinder or have a, uh, one engine in particular that would scuff a little bit more than another one, and then the next one comes back and it's absolutely perfect. The skirts look just perfect. And I think it's because I've been a little inconsistent in my surface finish, and I'm too smooth in my surface finish. So we'll bring this block over here, and we'll we'll uh, run the uh, the profilometer through that, and I'll show you that surface finish. Can we overlay, or you just have to go back and forth? We'll have to go back. And okay. Forth, yeah. So you'll see you'll see there. Look at it one more time, real close. That's what that looks look like. At, you might want to home in on your RK, RPK, and RPK yeah. numbers. Yep. So that RK number, the PK number of seven. Um, I always used to just only look at the RA numbers because so the. I would have a RA number of 16. In fact, that's what that one is, a yep. 16. And, uh, but totally different totally VK different. numbers. Yep. So you see that. Now, we'll go grab that other block. We'll stick the profilometer in it and show you that real quick. Clean this out, even though I think this is actually clean, but we'll see. 
Now this is the same block too. So this is a, a Dart LS Next block. Iron, this one's already clean. And that is a Dart LS Next block. So same material, same everything. Now we'll put the profilometer in here. And actually you can see this a little bit better when we do it this way. Let's get a little closer here. It's a little cramped up in here. Put it in, just put a little bit of pressure on it. Uh, but like I said, that little uh, the little finger thing there just goes up and down. It's some kind of pressure, I don't know what. Now you see here, it's going to be really interesting. I think you could probably put it put it right on there because it'll pop up and you're going to see a dramatically different graph. Is that a graph? It's a graph. Yeah. It's a graph. Yeah. Take a yeah, it's going to take just a second because it's still measuring. It's still measuring. It is done now and it'll uh, start bringing over some material. It should be popping up. There we go. Now you can see that is dramatically different. What these lines are is probably like a, a grit stuck in the, in the bore. Yep, could be. Yeah. But you see, dramatically different. Our RK number is 19. I think it was 30 on the 32. 32. The PK is 3, so very smooth up on top. And the VK is 29 versus we wanted it to be 70. 70. So I think ours was 72. It's uh, it is more important than what you think. So this is this is just one of those deals where way faster, way less. Uh, what's the word? So the uh, employee user time. error. Yeah, user error. Uh, way less time consuming for for an employee. Uh, you can we can literally set this up on one bore, walk away, come back, measure it, go. Okay, gotta take this much more, take this much more, and it just does it. Um, and the diamonds just if you, if you knew how long it takes on an older machine, it can be done. Yes. Uh, is it harder to do? Absolutely. Does it take more time? absolutely uh, but if, how much time is involved and in, uh, usually it's a couple hours to do it on on an old machine to do you know to bore like five or three thousandths I'm sorry hone the final three thousandths five thousandths um, it just takes a long time and you're just you're working the machine you got to feel it it's very hard to explain to people uh, new employees how to feel that that is really hard to do uh, no feel here it just does it correctly uh, because of the design of the machine what's all going on so you can see here uh, it is just dramatically different and this is perfectly fine on the ring as far as where uh, break in sealing on the ring it, it's probably a little bit smooth but uh, that is probably more prone to scuffing a skirt because it's not holding very much oil so and when it's holding oil in, in that type of microscopic groove, it's not burning the oil, it's not using the oil, it's using it as lubrication. So, very excited about this whole deal. I, uh, this is definitely going to step up our game one more notch. And um, does it make, so, so because we're doing things faster, does it make it cheaper to do? <laughs> no. <laughs> I got to pay for the machine, people. It costs money. Um, so anyways, uh, very excited about this. It's going to be, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. We got a bunch of blocks lined up right now to, to do a couple other LS blocks and got to finish up this, uh, a uh, couple big blocks. And so we're just going to start letting this uh, machine eat and, uh, make money while I go do something else. So, uh, I'm Steve Morris. Go to, uh, Rottler. Is it Rattler.com? Uh, RattlerMFG.com. Rattler MFG. Yeah, I remember, forget about the MFG. Go over there. You can see really cool equipment. Obviously, you can see the F69, which is behind us. The new hone that we just, the mega hone, king of all hones here. Super, just it's ecstatic about, about this, just saving time and making things really, really nice. So, um, like, subscribe, buy some merch. Go check out Rattler. And uh, I'm Steve Morris. Have a great day.